Did you know that there's a secret rhythm in table tennis that will help you improve your footwork tremendously? Well, hopefully after this video, you'll see and you'll learn. My name is Olaf Kozlowski. This is Table Tennis Technical Oh yeah. Wow, is it Ik vond het precies leuk dat je geen balken op mij ging slagen. Ik voel het al komen. Vorige keer? Ja? Ja, maar vorige keer was het een gelegenheid. Vorige keer hadden we de goede auto. Oké? Okay? Nu Allee. zijn we teruggewend. Nu gaan we terug naar het oude systeem. Zo gaat het. En ik, ik, ik ga mikken. Ik ga goed mikken. Is dat beloft? Ik hoop het. Ja, hoopt het? Ik hoop het. Oké, okay, ga de manier weer onderbreken. Oké. Okay. Ja, want ik vind dat echt niet aangenaam als je mij onderbreekt. Oké. Okay. Ik kan dat echt niet tegen, oké? Okay? Volgende keer niet meer. We go, here we go, here we go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go, oké. Okay. Oké, okay. ja, ja, ja. Niet vergeten dat ik knippen zie. Nee, nah, komt goed. Ja. Ze willen niet denken dat ik aan het risico ben. Dat is wel een zonde. Mijn naam is Olaf Kozelowski. Dit is Table Tennis Technolytics. Let's go. Oh! Ik ging dat niet doen. <laughs> so guys, welcome back to another video. I'm here as I always am in the Kilipong Hall here in Antwerp, hall of my sponsor. And today we're going to look at the secret rhythm in table tennis. See, in footwork, it's important to remember that there are some sort of mechanics, some sort of standards which apply to almost every shot, uh, to almost every shot, to almost every shot. And hopefully in this video you will see that there is a sort of two-step which applies almost everywhere and hopefully which will help you to simplify your pursuit of better footwork, of better speed, of better explosivity. So, as I said, it's sort of a two-step. The one step that you take when you're playing a shot and the other as a sort of gather step between shots. See, this principle of not staying still while playing a shot, it is quite important for a couple of reasons. And I discussed one of these in the previous videos. Mainly, it's for creating enough space for you, even when you're a little bit too late and you're out of position. So, for example, in the middle, uh, a mistake that a lot of people make is that they will move one leg, but one of the other legs, the other leg, it will just stay still. The other reason is just for explosivity, you want to get back in time, you want to stay dynamic, you want to keep moving. And without that, without stepping and moving all the time, you won't be able to do this. But now let's review how those two steps really are to be done. So if you look from the side here, you'll see that I'll try to demonstrate a little bit. It's mainly, it's just that both legs do something during the movement, both in forehand and in backhand. Both when the ball comes in your racket or when you have to move a little bit or when you're a little bit out of position. Uh, in all of those situations, you will have to move. Um, so, for example, if I'm playing a forehand there and I'm in the rally, I'm playing a shot and see, I'm moving a little bit, getting back, to my neutral position. So again, this gather step is the second step. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. It's always just a little bit like this. And sometimes it's not so easy to see because you won't have these same jumps all the time. Sometimes, for example, you will set the first leg before you set the other leg, but you have to count it as one step. So the way I count this, is that once you have set both, foot, uh, both feet, that counts as one step. I'll just switch back to the studio at home where I'll show you some match examples or maybe some examples from some videos that I shot here in which you'll see that I'm really taking two steps all the time, all the time. It helps me to keep my rhythm during the rally. So that way I won't be totally out of position, uh, yeah, I won't be out of order, so to say. So I just shot some basic videos, some basic training videos that day. Nothing too special and I'll just try to show you here how this one two really applies here. So I'm just playing a forehand middle exercise, very simple, nothing too special here. And so you'll see that 
even during the shot, like both of my feet are still uh, not shifting really. They're still jumping a little bit. Mainly, mainly the goal for this is uh, staying active, staying explosive. Because as I said a few times already, and maybe also in previous videos, that if you stay still or if you stay static in your uh, while you're playing a shot, you don't create enough space for yourself, first of all. And second of all, also for the next ball, it's much more difficult to get back in time and to get back into position. So here you'll see that in the middle, that if you pay attention to my right foot, it's always going to move with me playing as well. It's not going to stay planted on the ground. So here I'm just moving constantly. Plus, yeah, I mean, it's it's also you're sort of adapting while you're playing a little bit. It's it's unreasonable to think that you're going to position yourself every time before the ball, um, meaning that you're not going to get into position before you're even touching the ball. So oftentimes when you're playing and you're getting to that ball and while you're playing the shot, you're taking the step. Well, that step isn't only for uh, explosivity uh, purposes, but also just for getting into a little bit of a better position. See here? And now in back and middle, just the same principle really. Also again, the right foot is always doing something. And uh, sometimes it looks like my feet are not going off the ground, but that is, yeah, correct in a way but it's still a step you have to count as a step when whenever i'm sort of like gliding you'll see it a few times here when i'm playing this backhand block so if you look at the left foot sometimes one more time i'll i'll just repeat it one more time see there are a few a few times where it doesn't look like it my left foot is doing so much but nevertheless i'm staying active staying static Now let's put this into practice. Let's put this principle of the two-step into practice. And there are some ways you can train this, some, uh, there are some ways you can practice this. And my suggestion to you would be any exercise with one ball regular and one ball irregular. This could be middle free or middle corner. This could be one ball in the forehand, then one ball in the middle or the backhand. This could be the other way around even like one ball in the back end, one ball in the middle or the forehand. See, there are endless ways that you can practice this system. And why this one ball irregular? One ball regular? Well, because the regular ball gives you time to regroup. So the irregular one leads you to be able, you have to guess, you have to guess for this ball to come. So you're not sure, so you're not going to position yourself before the ball comes. You're not going to position yourself there already because it might come in a different place. But, here's the thing, if you play too many of these balls, sometimes you'll get a little bit out of position, maybe the level is not there yet or the speed is not there yet. So that's where the regular ball comes in handy, because that ball will give you the time to regroup. So it's always this, you might find it a little bit challenging to get after this irregular ball wherever it may come, but then the ball where you know it will come afterwards, the regular ball, gives you some time to regroup, to put yourself back into position, and this will give you all the time this timing, this timing of this one, two step, the two step, all the time. So it's those exercises I would very much recommend to you. But there are some exceptions to that rule. There are some exceptions to that rule of having to set two steps. Well, over the table, first of all, because there the rhythm is a little bit different when you're, for example, playing short, short, the stepping in, stepping out, it depends for a lot of people. Some people, they take like an extra step in between. So that is not really applicable, that principle of these two steps. And the second principle might be when you're playing in like the second or the third position and you're being a little bit passive. You're being a little bit passive. Moonballing is what it's called in tennis, I suppose, or fishing in, in table tennis. And in those situations, oftentimes it comes in very handy to set like an extra step because yeah, you have to travel a little bit more distance. And Traveling that distance in two steps, it's not so feasible sometimes. 